This is a Chemistry 12 review video for electrolysis. Electrolysis is the production of a chemical reaction by means of an electric current, which is the reverse of an electrochemical cell that we saw previously. An electrochemical cell um, is spontaneous and produces electrical energy. In an electrolysis, we have to add the energy. Now, if we recall, for an electrochemical cell, uh, the spontaneous one that we just did, it looked like this. We had a salt bridge for moving uh, ions. We had electrons to move through the wire. We had a voltmeter to measure the number of volts. And we had electrodes on either side, the anode and the cathode. Uh, essentially, the two half reactions were separated. So you'd have one half reaction happening on one side and one half reaction happening on the other side. This was done so that the spontaneous reaction wouldn't, if you dump these two beakers together, uh, the spontaneous reaction would happen but all at once. We wouldn't actually get any useful volts out of the system because it would all go to heat and it would all react right away. So for electrochemical cell, we were forced to separate the two half reactions and only let them connect through the wire and the salt bridge. Now, back to an electrolytic cell. An electrolytic cell is a cell in which electrolysis occurs. An electrolytic cell is the system in which electrolysis can occur. Electrical energy is used to force a non-spontaneous chemical change. This cell is going to look a, a little different. So the fir our first task is going to be design and label the parts of an electrolytic cell that is capable of electrolyzing an aqueous salt. Uh, for purposes of grade 12 chemistry, we do not have to worry about the overpotential effect. If you don't know what the overpotential effect is, that's fine. If you'd like to know, check your textbook. Now what is going to be the same between electrochemical cells and electrolytic cells is our mnemonic LEOA and GERC. Loss of electrons is oxidation, which occurs at the anode. Gain of electrons is reduction, which occurs at the cathode. So our anode and cathode reactions will be the same. There'll be oxidation at the anode and reduction at the cathode. So let's consider our first reaction. A solution of sodium iodide is made and two inert carbon electrodes are introduced to the system attached to a cell. An electrolytic cell looks a little bit different from an electrochemical cell. Uh, it all takes place in one beaker. We don't have to worry about spontaneous reactions occurring uh, if we set it up right. Uh, it needs to be connected to a DC power source. We are, of course, uh, forcing this particular reaction uh, to occur. Uh, we still have our, our anode and we still have our cathode. And so all of that is going to still occur, but now it can occur in one beaker. Now, uh, a few differences. The cathode is negative in electrolytic cells. The cathode is positive technically in electrochemical cells. It is negative in electrolytic as electrons are forced into the cell to force the reduction uh, to occur. So the cathode is the negative side and the anode is the positive side. Now let's look at what species we have. We have sodium, iodide, and water, since it is an aqueous solution. Now in this, we've got bubbles coming off, and we have something growing on the anode, uh, which is a little unusual. I mean, cathodes normally increase in mass, so not entirely sure what's going on here. In order to determine what is happening, we need to go back to our table of standard reductions. Here is a portion of the table of standard reductions. I've reduced it a little bit and cut out some unnecessary reactions in order to um, observe what's going on. Uh, the first thing to do whenever you have a cell like this, it's a circle all species present that could possibly react. So what are our reactants? Well, our first reactant, we've got water. And we've got water. And we've got sodium ionides. Now, it's not, of course, a sodium electrode. First of all, that would react in water. And secondly, even if you could make one, um, we wouldn't want this uh, reacting. This would be a stronger reducing agent than our iodine right here. So now we have all species present. What is going to react? Now, considering what's going to react, it is helpful to note that nature is lazy. It doesn't want to do any more work than it has to. In electrochemical cells, we were looking for the, to get the largest voltage. Now, this is going to be an uphill reaction of some kind. And so we want 
one that will take the least energy. Um, which reaction of those present with these reactants would take the least energy? We would have these reactants going to these products, and we would have these reactants going to these products. Uh, pause the video and predict for yourself what is the most likely reaction. In predicting which reaction would be the most likely one, um, it is useful uh, to consider which reaction um, would have the would require the least amount of energy. Now, if you predicted the iodine reaction and this water reaction, you would be correct. Why would you be correct? Because it would require the least amount of energy. Um, this water reaction, uh, as a reduction, uh, would require minus 0 0.41 volts, minus, what's our oxidation, 0 0.54 which would leave us require 0 0.96 volts um, for the entire cell. So this cell would require negative 0 0.96 volts or 0 0.96 volts to be put into it. Uh, if we use this species here, uh, H2O, and you predicted that one, then we would be minusing, instead of 0 0.54, 0 0.82. That would create a more negative number. If we use this value down here, uh, the point minus 0 0.27 would be starting out at a more negative number. So essentially, um, we still want to use the strongest reducing agent, and that's this species. And we still want to use the strongest oxidizing agent. So that one is the furthest up, and that's this species. Um, overall, this produces a cell that requires the least amount of voltage, and if you join the reactants, you'll notice the reaction is going uphill. This is a useful mnemonic to remember that this is a non-spontaneous reaction. It requires energy to go into it. Now that we've picked our most likely reactions, which are this water reaction, and the iodine reaction with our strongest reducing agent and our strongest oxidizing agent, we can go back and predict and label our cell, which will happen in part two of this series. This is the end of part one of the review for an electrolytic cell.